From the mean streets of New York to the hills of Los Angeles, a voice is rising to serve justice. Every Christian understands that we are all sinners. And- okay. This is the Norman Goldman Show. We are arguing that under the law, we're entitled to the deposition. The of fierce independence, intelligent dialogue, and passionate logic is right here, right now. The president has discovered a new ability to hit the mute button. Oh, America. shit. All right, Russiagate. We've got new federal court filings showing that Donald Trump's campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was in contact with a Russian guy who had some very, very potentially real links to Vladimir Putin during the campaign while he's working for Donald Trump. Lots and lots going on. I've got senior legal analyst time in the next hour. one 321 6001 Wow, what a busy show. Mark, you get us started in Seattle today. Hiya, Mark. Hey, Norm. Good to talk to you. It's been a while. Mark Taylor Canfield up here in the Emerald City. And what is going on with you, you, sir? Well, I have become a full-time journalist these days. I've gone from being one of those activists out there marching in the streets to being the guy that's interviewing people. I got my own newspaper column, and um, I'm a regular guest on a national show out of Boston now, and I'm doing the MTC report over at at uh, YouTube, so I'm busy also doing my music and stuff, but I'm really into journalism these days. also work with a group called Democracy Watch News, which is a pro-democracy movement sort of oriented news organization that covers global, global pro-democracy movements. But I've been seeing one here, and it's called <laughs> The March for Our Lives. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was huge here. You know, the, the march, it was about a mile long. It stretched all the way from the top of Capitol Hill down to Seattle Center where the Space Needle is. We had uh, Donald uh, Malloy, the Connecticut governor, speaking, and Jay Inslee, our governor in Washington State, spoke. We had Brandy Carlisle, a very famous local musician, and also Dave Matthews did a surprise set. He wasn't even expected to be there, but he happened to be marching with his daughter, and he decided to get up on stage and sing us a song. So it was intense, and it really... It goes out to those students who have organized all this. I mean, they're on fire. They're speaking truth to power. They're doing something that we should all be doing, which is holding our elected officials accountable and calling them out for what, like, you know, what Jimmy Carter even recently at the Carter Center said is basically legal bribery, bribery, legal bribery in our political system right now, where a group like the NRA can just bankroll candidates control the agenda in large parts of the country. And finally, the students are truly speaking truth to power, and the NRA has received a lot of mounting bad publicity for bankrolling some of these entrenched politicians. And it looks politically corrupt. I mean, I think, you know, in their right-wing propaganda, it has very little to do with, you know, a sporting club, well, guys who like to go hunting or sports shooting. This is about a right-wing agenda, which is really offensive to a lot of folks up here in Seattle, where You know, we pride ourselves on progressive politics and the $15 an hour minimum wage, you know, and legal marijuana and all that. I mean, this is not a place where people go for right-wing extremism or propaganda. So thousands and thousands hit the streets, Norm. It was probably almost almost as big as the Women's March, which was also fantastically huge here in Seattle. Mark, you know, it's interesting because Oregon Senator, Democrat Senator Ron Wyden was uh, is going after. He's going after the NRA for the foreign money. We covered it on a show yesterday. The NRA wrote a letter where they very loyally kind of use very careful language, basically admitting that they take foreign money. But they're saying they take foreign money from American subsidiaries of foreign outfits. I don't think that's legal either. uh, But they're using they're using the 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 uh, Koch brothers Supreme Court you know uh, uh, loophole that from Citizens United to basically uh, have dark money come in and, and they don't have to account for where it's coming from and so Mark where do we go from here on guns you're talking about the the gun reform now uh, hashtag gun reform now where do we go from here on guns the, the the teens from Parkland want every member of Congress to hold a town hall in April on guns is that a good idea what where do we go after that? That's a great start. That's exactly how democracy is supposed to work. There's supposed to be open, public transparency and people holding their leadership accountable. So if the students call for uh, town halls and forums on gun violence, we need to do it now. 
And at least they're ahead of the curve, right? The politicians have been dragging their feet on this issue, especially those bankrolled by the NRA. And, you know, nobody is, is saying, at least the, 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 you know, the artists and the, the musicians that were performing and some of the organizers, nobody is saying, let's get rid of the Second Amendment. What they're saying is, let's John have Paul some Stevens reason, is. <laughs> reasonable, rational gun regulation, just like and there's gun regulation reform. of your, of your, Mark, let let me ask you this, though. If if you're a Democratic politician, do you feel like you're being pressured by these kids to have a town hall? And if you have a town hall, it looks like the kids are running you. Politicians have a big ego. Do you you think the kids maybe are are underestimating the ego of politicians by demanding to have town halls? Because politicians are saying, well, if I have a town hall, it looks like I'm knuckling under to you. But if I don't have a town hall now, you're picking a fight with me? I mean, how do you think politicians are going to react to that? I guess that depends on the politician, Norm. We are lucky here in this part of the country. We have a congressman, uh, Congresswoman Pramilia Jayapal, who's amazingly progressive on this issue, who loves young people. Uh, we've got Governor uh, Inslee, who is speaking out in favor of the young folks here and giving them all the creds in the world for being up front and out front on this issue and saying, you know, Jay Inslee said from the podium, what we need to do is turn this state over to the young folks as fast as possible. Because uh-huh. they're the ones Absolutely. that are ahead on this. Mark, I yeah, love you. Thanks so much. man. There, And in fact, the kids need to surge into this process. These contests have fought in the margins. If we can add a couple of percent of new 18-year-olds, that'll swing a lot of elections. 49 to 51 losers become 51 to 49 winners. And think of all the elections that are 51 to 49. You bring another 2% in that's on your side, 18-year-olds, boom, you've just won a 51 to 49 race. And these races are fought in the margins. If you haven't figured that out by now, if you're on hold, you're next. one 321 6001 Senior legal analyst time is 17 minutes away. Three topics where justice is served. The Norman Goldman Show. Norman. Norm, earlier you said that one of the things we like about Bernie is that he is genuine. And have we told you enough that we feel that way about you? Well, I do. Very kind. And I know you do. Um, and you're kind. genuine. You teach us a lot. You have patience with us through this. Explain it in terms that I can understand. Getting involved. I went to my Democratic ward meeting and it's opportunity. There's lots of empty seats there. We can go oh, and make a difference. This is the Norman Goldman Show. Put yourself in their shoes. Look at the world through their eyes. Oh, these cookies! Richard, thanks for being with us on WCPT in Chicago. Hi, Richard. Hey, Norm. Good to talk to you. I enjoy your show a lot. Uh, I got a scenario for you. Um, If you were the president, you, Norman Goldman, and you had a Democrat 60-vote supermajority, would you go ahead and try to ban guns? No. I would ban assault rifles. I mean, I would resuscitate. I would resuscitate the 1994 to 2004 assault weapons ban. I'd update it, but I mean, we've. I, I, have you listened to this show in the last couple of days? I've outlined ten uh, points, and so have you heard those? Yeah, uh, I briefly heard you. Could you go over them real quick? I mean, you got oh, sure. Or? How about a license? First of all, you have to have a license. Second of all, you have to have okay. insurance. Third of all, you got to lock up your guns, and, and, and you're going to be responsible for them if something happens to them. Fourth of all, we're going to mark the bullets. This technology can do it right now. So if you fire above the police, it's to help the police solve crimes. They can match a gun to a bullet, right? Ban assault rifles. Ban the clips. You can have all the rifles you want. You can have all them, but you got to keep them in your home for self-defense. If you want to go hunting, you get a hunting license, just like you do now. That's it. So there you go. I mean, that's the essence so, of it. You'd have to have continuing education classes like lawyers have to do. I mean, it's you have to be responsible. You have to demonstrate you're responsible. And if you blow your own kids' brains out with it, you're going to prison too. I just have a question. Uh, what if we do all those things and it doesn't stop the mass shootings and it doesn't stop the gangbangers shooting each other in Chicago? Like, what, are, what other steps would we do if it doesn't stop anything? Well, let me ask you this. It, it, are you setting... It, uh, perfection as a standard because that sounds like what you're doing if you're if you're saying we've got if unless we can completely eliminate all of this and and less than until norm you can guarantee every last one's going to go away then let's not do it at all well do we do that for cancer do we say let's not do any cancer research unless we can guarantee there'll be no more cancer 
Do we do that for mental illness? Do we do it for anything? What we're always trying to do, Richard, is lessen the damages. And that's why you, sir, started with an agenda. You called here with an agenda. And I hope that working with the facts and living with the truth, you will learn to see the light. In any event, we've got senior legal analyst time straight ahead right here where justice is served. Now, this, the, the arrogance, the snottiness and the smugness, I propose the following. Now, I'm not proposing marriage. <laughs> I propose the following. We use these people. We use them, right? I'm playing, playing you these my time. And Chris and Michael, they're enjoying their work very thoroughly. I, I know that. And, and, and so we have to use this. Now, if you want to confront them with it, you confront them with it, but you're not talking to them. You're not going to convince these knuckle-dragging Neanderthals. We're talking to the giant pool of people, the massive audience of people out there that is reachable that's normal that is disgusted by all of this yesterday we talked about the white suburban college educated women and the millions of them and and many of them are turning away from donald trump well all we need to do remember these contests have fought in the margins all we need to do is just chip away a half a percent here a quarter percent there a percentage here and we're getting there we're getting there we need to have no short attention span so we just got to keep fighting all right and by the way, coming back to the Nancy Pelosi thing, this would help us fight if we weren't having to battle the branding, imaging, and positioning of the Republicans. Now, now, with that said, I have to hasten to add, the Republicans are always going to say something. We are always going to say something. Please remember, and we need to make this differentiation. Everybody is always going to make an argument. You and I can only dream of ever getting to a point where our political opponent says, okay, I got nothing left to say. You're right. Hello. It'll never happen. They Look, we're all lawyers, right? Whether we're lawyers or not, actually or not, we're always making an argument, right? We always concoct an argument to get us to the end result that we have previously decided to get to. So understand that we're fighting in the margins. It's a few people here, a few people there. And when you add up a few here and a few there, you get into a really big wave. All right. One triple eight three two one six thousand and one four topics this hour. Donald Trump has been silent. Now, I believe that he's stewing. I believe that he is fulminating. I have the best words. I have the best words. That's a good word, too. Fulminating. It's an F like Frank. U-L. There's only one L like Larry. F-U-L. And then minating, right? M-I-N-A-T-I-N-G. Fulminating. To go bing, 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 and I take care of it. The other way, I'd never be able to get the word out. Bing, bing. Bing, 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 and I take care of it. Bing, 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 you press a button, bing, bing. They all hand you checks, bing, 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 bing. You people know a lot about trucks. Bing, 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 bong, bong, bing, 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 bong. We had our beautiful Marine standing there, bing, 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 bing. You know the old days, bing, bong, bing. Little mouth on him, bing, 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 they're cleaning up. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, bing, bing. 14 point plan. Bing, bing, bing. Anthony Weiner. You know the little. Bing, bing, bong. You know what that is. Bing, bing, bop. Bing, bing, bop. Bong. Bing, bing, bing. Everyone's attacked me has gone bing. Everyone else, bing. Where have they gone? Bing, boom. Right under the toilet. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, boom. Right up. Bing, like a rocket ship. Bing, 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 bing. Bong, bong, bing, 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 bong. In the wrong direction. I'd fly over, drop him right on top. You know, just bing. Bing, 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 bing. You press a button. Bing, bing. They all hand you checks. Bing, 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 bing. Four words made in the USA. Bing. And there you go. Now that is that last one, the bing, bing, bing. I love that bing, bing, bing. Uh, I love those guys. All right. Now that's kind of one of the things that we play on the stream. Now Michael and Krista do these things. And I played you the two, the two montages, one of Donald Trump and the women. Here it is. You have a good body? No. I never thought she was good looking. But I don't, I don't think she's got good skin. I don't think she's got a great face. I think her lips are too big, to be honest with you. You know, they look like too big. I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. I'd say, you're fine. I moved in her like a You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. We're all a little chubby, but Rosie's just worse than most of us. Grab him by the Rosie is a very unattractive person. I respect women. I love women. I cherish women. I respect women. 
incredibly. I did try and her. She was married. She gained a massive amount of weight, and uh, it, was, it was a real problem. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. You take a look at her, she's a slob. I respect women. I love women. I cherish women. I respect women incredibly. She weighed 118 pounds or 117 pounds, and she went up to 160 or 70. So this is somebody that likes to eat. I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else. And, you know, no men are anywhere. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant, and therefore I'm inspecting it. You know, I'm inspecting. Right, I right. want to make sure that like everything doctor, is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress. Is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like that. She is terrific. I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. All right. So there are now three montages, two of them from Krista, one of that one you just heard, and the one about the Christian women apologizing for making excuses for Donald Trump while they are just vindictive and nasty and willing to sit in judgment and condemn any of their political enemies. How do you think Jesus would react to this? Say what? Now, <laughs> hi there. and Thanks so much for being with me right here. I hope my voice is better. My voice sounds better to me. I'm almost 100%. This is a really strange little bug that's going around. A lot of people have it, but I do believe I'm over it. I think my voice is about 97%. Uh, but you get to tell me because it's you and me on the phones today, as we do so often. But we have nine topics to plow through today nine topics it was just and we could have done more but i'm doing six top of the news topics each one of these could be a show by itself this is i mean speaking of itself i'm speaking with myself i'm speaking of the news i'm speaking with myself we have nine topics today three of them are senior legal analyst time quiet nine and 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 we've got a lot of donald today stop it oh we got a lot of donald today but We have such a packed show that I really want to be as efficient with time as I can. So I just want to give you a quick layout of of what's going on and then just dive right in and just try and be as economical with the time as we can. I'm reserving as much as I can for you at 1-888-321-6001. Just note the number for a moment, please. 1-888-321-6001. And the email address, norm at normangoldman.com, because I want to just give you a quick run through of the nine topics and then focus in on, you know, the the ones that I consider the most important of the important and kind of lay out the schedule for you. So this way, if you're listening for, you know, the opening and you want to go back later as a Beyond the Normer, for example, uh, just to get the layout. By the way, tonight's Beyond the Norm segment is a it's a quickie and it's not anything immediate, but it's about nuclear fusion. You remember nuclear fusion? like nuclear fission was going to be too cheap to meter it's still out there nuclear fusion is still being researched and there was a noteworthy development so i just wanted to give us a quick update on nuclear fusion in tonight's beyond the norm i do not represent that this is the most consequential beyond the norm we've ever done however i just wanted to kind of stick a pin in this in this issue here and say just put a distant eye on it so that's tonight's beyond the norm there's still a possibility of nuclear fusion that's how the sun makes energy Anyway, nine topics today. Let's start. Let's start with the four that I want to do in this hour with you. And I'm going to go through it as quickly as I can. The four topics this hour is Donald Trump has been really, really quiet these last three days. Very unusual. The president has discovered a new ability to hit the mute button. Uh, and I'm told by a source close to the White House uh, that essentially the plan for now is for the president to stick to this uh, this strategy to avoid uh, this topic of Stormy Daniels. And according to this source, uh, one of the reasons why is the president's poll numbers. Uh, they feel like the president's poll numbers are holding steady and even doing better. Uh, and there, there is a point there. If you look at our latest CNN poll, uh, his numbers among evangelicals and Republicans, are, are they're pretty strong. And so at this point, the, I think the, the theory is do no harm. Even though he's being the commander in brief this week on this topic, you have to wonder if they're setting the stage for a really dramatic moment in Washington when he finally does break his silence on this issue, sort of like like when Bill Clinton finally addressed Monica Lewinsky. Well, there you go. That's Jim Acosta of CNN, and we do thank CNN for that. Now, I'd like you to hold that thought on the polling about the evangelicals because Krista, our terrific producer, she put together, and Krista gets the credit, she put together this an amazing montage from, from a CNN focus group. CNN did a focus group, Randy Kay, on Christian women and Donald Trump. 
And Krista said, Norm, we've been talking about this on the show, and I found this stuff. So Krista gets the credit. She did this amazing montage. You got to hear it, and I'm going to play it in just a moment. And this is Wednesday, and we started a new feature now. Wednesday at 33 minutes into the first hour, we're going to play one of those funny things that we've been playing only on the stream. And we've got one of my personal favorites today. It's Bing, 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 Bing. So stick around in just 23 minutes. We're gonna Now, that's Krista and Michael. I'm featuring them a lot more now because I want you to get to know them. You got to know me over eight plus years. Let's get to know Krista and Michael and their very creative work because we're all radio people and they love what they're doing too. So hold the hold this thought because Krista did this montage. I, I gotta tell you, your hair is going to either stand on end or fall out, not necessarily in that order. Because Wait, what? because when you hear what these Christian women say, it's just really unbelievable. So Donald Trump has been silent, and the kids from Parkland have not. The kids from Parkland are now saying, look, let's have all the members of Congress hold town halls in April, and they've even like picked a day by April something, and they're working on it right now. And I saw a tweet from David Hogg, one of the student leaders there with Emma Gonzalez and the other kids, and and H O G G. And David Hogg said he's creating a, an interactive, constantly updating spreadsheet of all the members of Congress and whether they've agreed to hold a town hall on guns or not. I'm extremely heartened to see that the teens from Parkland are doing two wonderful things. Number Number one is they're focused on registration to vote. They're getting all their classmates registered. They're getting high school kids everywhere registered. And where you can do pre-registration, right, this is really fantastic. Getting kids registered to vote because if you get them started voting at 18, it becomes a habit. So that's number one. Number two is I'm really happy to see that all the teens of Parkland are focused on no short attention span. Hashtag no short attention span. And for teenagers who are the ultimate short attention attention span people to have this focus on no short attention span and how do we sustain the energy it's really really heartening to see so i'm very very optimistic about the kids that's topic number two all right then we have russiagate we've got russiagate because there's giant news on russiagate check this out in court filings late last night special counsel prosecutors revealed that they have evidence that deputy campaign chairman richard gate repeatedly met with someone he knew had ties to russian intelligence during the campaign that's paula reed of cbs news and we thank cbs news for that on russiagate now you understand rick gates was was paul manafort's like top dude for a long time rick gates 45 married a group of little kids rick gates has pled guilty and is cooperating one of the things that Rick Gates has now given over to the prosecutors in his cooperation agreement is the fact that actually during the campaign in August 2016, when Paul Manafort was still the chairman of the Donald Trump for president campaign, he was meeting Paul Manafort and Rick Gates were meeting with these Russian, this Russian guy, Konstantin Kalimnik. Now, Konstantin Kalimnik is not named in the papers that were just filed by Robert Mueller, the special counsel. However, the description is this guy, Konstantin Kalimnik, who was a very close business associate in Ukraine for Paul Manafort, super close. And Konstantin Kalimnik has very interesting ties to the Russian military intelligence services and Vladimir Putin. According to these court documents, Richard Gates was doing business with someone who is only referred to as Person A. Special prosecutors say this Person A is a critical part of this overall investigation. And in these court documents, prosecutors allege that Gates repeatedly had contact with this individual over the course of September 2016 and October 2016, the final months of the campaign. All right, that again is Paula Reed, and we thank CBS News for that. And so Russiagate is moving along a pace. So we've got that as well. Here's topic number four I want to get to in this hour, and I'm just giving you quick previews. Democratic candidates for the House of Representatives all across the nation are running away from Nancy Pelosi. The reason is, is that the Republican Party is running against Nancy Pelosi in the upcoming congressional elections. Republicans are basically running against Nancy Pelosi everywhere, saying, if you vote for the Democrat Party, Nancy Pelosi and her radical San Francisco liberal progressive values are going to take over and they're going to do everything to destroy America. Right? So Nancy Pelosi is the face of the Democratic Party, at least as the Republicans are attempting. Tell me if you've heard me say these words before. Branding 
Imaging and positioning. I know that. All right, well, you know, it's almost like we can make it an acronym now. Gosh, I don't know. How about BIP? What do you think of BIP? This guy. <laughs> Brandi- branding, right? Branding, imaging, and positioning. What do you think of BIP? I profoundly disagree. All right, maybe you don't like BIP, but it's an easy way to remember it. Branding, imaging, and positioning. And that's exactly what the Republicans are doing here with Nancy Pelosi. They're using her and her San Francisco values to brand, image, and position, or at least to attempt to do it. And by the way, San Francisco values are American values. You know what You know what San Francisco values are, right? San Francisco values are diversity, acceptance, tolerance, and freedom, right? Isn't that what San Francisco represents? Freedom, you can be who you want to be. Acceptance, accept everybody, we're all people. Tolerance, tolerate people just because they're not like you. And diversity. If that's not San Francisco, if that's not America, if that's not what America's supposed to be, I don't know what is. But anyway, I have said, Nancy Pelosi, you should really step aside because the Republicans are using you as as their branding, imaging, and positioning kind of pinata here. They're beating up on you. Now, and I know a lot of people got upset, and if you want to talk to me about it, I'm happy to talk to you about it. I will post up on our social media sites, by the way, the article I'm talking about, so you see I'm not making this up. I do have facts to back this up. I don't have facts to back this up. I have facts to back this up, and I'll post it up on social media so you can see. If you want a lifetime position in government, you should become a judge. Right. Federal judges are there for life and you can't diminish their pay in office. If you want a lifetime job, become a judge. Nancy Pelosi's been there forever. There's a lot of people behind her with a lot of creative energy who could really use a shot at the top job. I don't believe personally in term limits. I'm just, I've seen them in action and they don't work. They don't accomplish the job that they are intended to do. However, I really think that politicians need to understand it's not about them. It's about the causes that they are fighting for. And I I think Nancy Pelosi has got to, you know, look, it's too late anyway. She's not going to step aside now. But I'm just saying all of us need to consider that part of being engaged in this process of civics and politics and government is we're we're being. We're being a part of something larger than ourselves. We are knitting ourselves and weaving ourselves into, into the fabric of a society here. We're, we're being a part of something much larger than ourselves. These causes are much bigger than us, which is why I fight with the people who say it's because I didn't get what I want and I'm throwing a temper tantrum. My response is you're a part of something bigger than yourself. It isn't about you. It's about all of us. And so this is my argument, not just for Nancy Pelosi, but for a lot of politicians been around a long time you know people get tired of seeing your face they want fresh faces they want new blood so let that be a lesson to all of us whether the republicans succeed in branding imaging and positioning nancy pelosi that's up to see i don't know what's going to happen i'm out of the prediction business so there's four topics to get us started i got three senior legal analyst topics to get us going that's in the next hour Number one is the Supreme Court today took up gerrymandering. I trust you know. We've been talking about it since yesterday. The Supreme Court today did an oral argument on a gerrymandering case, and some very interesting things came up that uh, nobody had been anticipating or talking about. And so I'll get you an update on what's going on there. The, the, The short answer, if you can't stick around for the next hour, is the Supreme Court may, may, end up bumping both of these gerrymandering cases. There are actually two of them. They may bump them into the next term. They may decide them both this June. Everybody, including me, thought we were going to get a decision this June. But some weird things happened today at the oral argument. So I've got to get you up to speed on what's going on there with the Supreme Court and gerrymandering, right? And speaking of gerrymandering, the, the Republicans the Republicans in, uh, in, in Pennsylvania are talking about kicking off the state Supreme Court justices, impeaching them because they rewrote the maps so there's that but also stormy daniels her lawyer is really putting the pedal to the metal on donald trump he wants to take a deposition he wants to take a deposition of michael cohen so we've got to do that but the third senior legal analyst topic is there was an emoluments clause ruling today by a federal judge in washington dc and this is fascinating 
the Constitution of the United States says the president can't be making money off of foreign leaders and gifts, right? And Donald Trump, as I'm trusting you know, is the grifter in chief. He's been making all kinds of money in violation of the Emoluments Clause, right? All the foreign dictators are taking uh, suites and, and doing events at his hotels, putting money in his pocket. I mean, it's a blatant violation of the Constitution's Emoluments Clause. That's what it's called. Look, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, the boys. They had the best words. They had the best words. I didn't make up that word. They had the best words. That's in the original Constitution. That's, you know, that's Alexander Hamilton and those guys. So, two state, actually one state and the District of Columbia, which is not a state, they have attorneys general. Maryland has a state attorney general. Your state has an attorney general. My state has an attorney general. Every state has an attorney general. Guess what? Washington, D.C. has an attorney general as well. And his name is Racine, Carl Racine. He got elected in January 2015. And there's a story behind that, but I'll spare us in the interest of time. In any event, Carl Racine, the elected uh, attorney general of Washington, D.C., the chief law enforcement officer of Washington, D.C., and the Maryland attorney general sued in federal court saying Donald Trump is violating the Emoluments Clause. The, the, the Donald Trump defense was, you don't have standing to sue. And we've talked about standing, right? Senior legal analyst time. Well, today a federal judge said, oh, yeah, they got standing to sue. They got standing. Hey, what? Now, that'll get appealed, and we'll be fighting about that. So there's three senior legal analyst topics. And then at 5 o'clock, what's going on in Sacramento over the police murder, and that's my word for it, the police murder of Stefan Clark, 20 shots, the whole thing in 90 seconds. I mean, there's got to be a better way to do policing than just be killing black people all over the place. And so Black Lives Matter very much on the agenda. Stefan Clark's death is really upsetting a lot of people in Sacramento and nationally. That's the state capital of California, by the way. 400 miles north of me in Los Angeles, a big state, 400 miles away. However, the state of California is getting engaged. So we have news on Stefan Clark and on the international scene. Kim Jong-un, the dictator of North Korea, went to China. And that's a very significant move. So we've got a lot to do today. I'll work in as best I can, as much as I can. 1-888-321-6001. But you got to hear Krista's montage on what Christian women are saying about Donald Trump, and then we can do some comparing and contrasting. We've got a special 33 minutes into the first hour Wednesday segment for you. I'll have time for you this hour, but I've got some more time. for. I need some more time for presentation where lots of stuff is happening today, and justice is always served. The Norman Goldman Show. Stay up on the world with Norm. Follow Norm on Twitter by going to Norman Goldman on Twitter. This is the Norman Goldman Show. You and I are about to listen to three montages here, and they're all they're all relevant. And here's the first one. Krista did the, the Krista did this one. It's about Donald Trump and women. Have a good body? No, I never thought she was good looking. But I don't. I don't think she's got good skin. I don't think she's got a great face. I think her lips are too big. To be honest with you, you know they look like too big. I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. I'd say you're fired. I moved on her like a. <laughs> You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. We're all a little chubby, but Rosie's just worse than most of us. Grab him by the Rosie is a very unattractive person. I respect women. I love women. I cherish women. I respect women incredibly. I did try and her. She was married. She gained a massive amount of weight. And uh, it was it was a real problem. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. You take a look at her; she's a slob. I respect women. I love women. I cherish women. I respect women incredibly. All right. Now, there's Krista's montage about Donald Trump and women. All right, we've got two more montages to do. And by the way, next week, we've got a very special montage at 33 minutes into the hour, especially if you're with us in Chicago. And if you're if you're a Cubs fan, you're going to love it. But stick with me. We've got lots of fun to do and time for you next where justice is served. All right, we know all about Donald Trump and women, right? And we've been talking about hashtag who is a Christian. First of all, I am a great Christian, and I am. And I played you a clip earlier this hour of Jim Acosta from CNN saying that CNN's polling is showing that Donald Trump is still holding his own there with Christians. All right, so... 
Krista found a, a focus group from CNN, Randy Kay, and she put together she put together this montage. This is Christian women. While you're listening to this, think about how they treated Barack Obama and Bill Clinton with Monica Lewinsky. And think about, Christians aren't supposed to judge. Look, I'm not a Christian. Christians are not supposed to judge, right? Judge not, lest ye be judged. Here are the, uh, here are the Christian women. She was shopping her story for money. Exactly. Just like all the other people that were trying to make money off the Trump name. This is a porn it's, star. Why are we giving it any credibility? Exactly. And the fact that she now wants to come out with a story because... She's afraid of her children. My <laughs> goodness, would you tell the kiddos about your full-time job? Should we, we believe the president of the him. United I States or a stripper porn star? I go with the president of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. When I voted for him, I wasn't voting for a choir boy. He had to change as a person in order to become a president. Stormy Daniels, if you... Um, the, the lifestyle that she's leading right now, I mean... I wish she would turn her life over the way that Trump has. Mm -hmm. Someone is looking and shopping for these people to come out of the woodwork because it is demeaning to our president. You can throw all of that stuff up in our face as many times as you want, but that means that we will work harder for Trump. Is that not so? Oh. That's correct. This is the media defining the narrative. The people, we the people, are ready to define the narrative. And it's not about tawdry sexual uh, peccadillos. Believe me. For somebody to come forward, you can be pushed by somebody else, Correct. right? And so mm -hmm. I think the thing is, is Money. you're looking for a way to impeach my president that I worked very hard for. Worst case scenario, if he slept with her, whatever. That's between him, the Lord, and his family. Exactly. That is not right. about the job he's doing in running our country, in which he's doing an amazing job. Now, that is Christian women talking to Randy K, CNN, and Krista just got the best of it. And by the way, Rick Santorum, Rick Sanatorium. Every Christian understands that we are all sinners and we all make mistakes and we all do things that we shouldn't do. And we, that's why, thank, as a Catholic, as you know, we have confession. Uh, and, you know, we go there to, it to, uh, to, uh, to confess our sins and that, and, and we should probably go every day. Uh, so I think everybody, there's a, there's a difference me. understanding that, you know, people are broken, people fail, people do a lot of bad things. And the, and, and then the question is, well, but how do they behave on the issues that we've elected them to deal with? All right. Now, obviously, they have weaponized Christianity and turned it into this sick, warped and distorted thing. Right. They sit in judgment of Barack Obama, Bill Clinton. It's disgusting. Right. These are these are people who decided that they are for Donald Trump and they have just decreed that he is a Christian and they're going to defend him. These people are insane, clinically insane. The challenge to you and me is to harness and marshal as many normal Americans as we can to just flush these people out to sea. I mean, in an ocean of votes, I'm talking about a democratic tsunami. There's no talking to these people. I'm laughing at them. And by the way, speaking of laughing, I promised you this at 33 after the hour. It's 36. Uh, there is a fake media out there. I get treated very unfairly by the media. And I have a tremendous platform between Twitter and uh, Instagram and all of them and Facebook. I have a tremendous platform. So, so, so when somebody says something about me, I'm able